found that about several months back and she she t- talked to me about it and I said you know I think it'll be a good thing I like it and it's been in the works for a while I mean we've been working on it probably since the first of the year it's we've been planning and trying to figure out how we're going to do this how's it going to work but I think it turned out really good Amen. something we should never forget about is the importance of the birth and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without it, there's no hope. Now, um, we're going to be in the book of Romans, chapter 5, if you have your Bibles. Now, the the last Youth Sunday that we had of last year, 2018, I preached in Romans, chapter 5. And the Lord has led me back to chapter 5. 
and it's pretty much picking up where I left off from last you Sunday. And if you was here last Sunday morning, Charles spoke about a couple of these verses, but we're going to dig into a few more of them, and we're going to talk about the importance of what Paul is writing here in the book of Romans and about the free gift that everybody in here has the opportunity to accept. Now, if you have your Bibles in Romans chapter 5, we're going to be reading verses 12 through 21. And this is what it says. In Romans 5, 5 12 21, through 21. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if though the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many, and not as it was by and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteousness, righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that's all we're going to read this morning. And as I read these scriptures, there's some things I want to point out. Is the very first verse I talked about, verse 12. Now, we see that it says, Wherefore, as by one man sinner, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed unto all men, for that all have sinned. We see here in verse 12, one man. The one man that we're talking about would be Adam. Adam in the Garden of Eden when he sinned, when he sinned against God, when he eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that was a sin. God did not allow sin. So by one man, sin entered into the world, and death was a result of that sin. We see here, when, he, when Paul writes this, 
It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, Adam brought sin into this world. And I want to tell you this morning that when you were born, you're born into sin. There's no way around it. Everybody in here was born into sin. There's no way to fix that except for one way. Now, you see here, he says, And so death passed upon all men, for that, for that all have sinned. The Bible tells us for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. And we see here that this death that we're speaking about is the spiritual death. You see, when Adam was in the garden, God himself came down in the evenings and talked and walked with Adam. They had a fellowship. They had a friendship and a fellowship together. But when sin come in, that all changed. There become this divide between God and Adam. No more could God come down and walk with Adam because of the sin that was there. Things changed. And this is where the death had come. If we look, it says, Wherefore, if you, if you listen to Charles, he'll say, For this reason. Well, if you back up in 11, verse 11 of chapter 5, it says, Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. There had to be an atonement for this sin that came into the world through Adam. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 11, is what I just read, an atonement is forgiving a pardoning of sin. You see, there had to be something take place to fix what Adam messed up. Now, when we go into verse 13, it says, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now, you look at that verse of Scripture, and look at the word imputed, and the dictionary says that that is, is delayed responsibility or blame for something often falsely or unjustly. In other words, before Moses came around, they didn't have the actual law written, written down. But you can read through the scriptures before Moses came up on the scene, God's people knew right from wrong. They knew what sin was. You can look back to Abraham and you can see, and all his descendants before Moses, they knew what was right and what was wrong. They didn't need the law to tell them that they was wrong against God. In other words, the people before Moses had no excuse to say to God, I didn't know what was right or wrong. I didn't know that I was doing wrong. There was no excuse for them. No excuse. And today, today's world that we live in now, we're in this society where the Bible is being pushed away. People don't want to hear it. When people don't want to hear it, their kids ain't going to hear it. And when their kids ain't going to hear it, they're going to use the excuse, I didn't know. That ain't going to work with God. There is no excuse for not knowing what sin is. Everybody will know what sin is. God will reveal to you what sin is. And we see here in verse 13 that these people before Moses had no excuse that they didn't have the law. Look in verse 14. It tells us, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude, or the similar, of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of of him that was to come. And, and uh, 1 John 3, 4 tells us that whosoever committeth sin transgress, transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. 
No excuse for the sin. Nevertheless, death reigned. Now, when we look at this, 1 Corinthians 15, 21 through 22, says, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now we see here in verse 14, says, even, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure that was to come. There's going to be somebody come here, as Paul was writing, and that man was Jesus Christ. It's so important that we understand that it only took one sin and one person to doom the entire human race. It messed everything up that God had planned. It just took one. That's all. That, to me, is so hard to understand. But that's the way God is. You have to understand that sin is so bad. It's so bad that God cannot look upon it. God can't stand it. He hates it. He does not like sin. And it only took one, one man and one sin to, to doom the entire human race. But we have Jesus Christ who comes upon the scene and it takes his sacrifice, just one sacrifice to fix all the sins of the world. And that to me, is awesome to think about that. Look in verse 15. This is where it gets good. It says, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if though the offense of one, the one being Adam, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. You see, right here, what Paul is writing, but not as the offense, the sin, but not as the sin. We see here the plan. Look here, it says, For if though the, the sin of Adam many be dead, Talking about us being spiritually dead. Much more the grace of God and the gift. There's that again, the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had the bounded unto many. It took one man to mess it all up, and it took one man, the Son of God, to fix it to the way it needed to be. And we see over here, look what Isaiah writes. In chapter 53, verse 10 through 11. This is Isaiah talking about Jesus way before Jesus ever was alive. And look what Isaiah says. Yet it, verse 10, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. When I think about what God did, and what Jesus was willing to do, when I think about how it just took one mess up to ruin the whole human race, why would God even bother to fix it? Why would he even bother? And why would Jesus himself volunteer to do this? You look at what Isaiah writes. It, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. How many in here would be pleased to bruise your children? He put him to grief. 
when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He offered himself for the atonement. The atonement we talked about in verse 11. The atonement. It pleased him to do this. That's the kind of love that the God that we serve has. It's the kind of love that it takes to fix what sin has done. We look at verse 16. It says, And not as it was by one that sinned, that one being Adam. As not and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift, there it is again, the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Now, when we look at that, we see it only took one sin and one man to mess it up, but it only took one man to cover all the sins of the world. You look at it, it says, it says, the free gift is of many offenses. That means it covers all sins. And that's what you have to have. You have to have the free gift that Jesus Christ offers you for salvation in order to be justified for your sins. It's so hard, it's so hard for me, myself, to wrap my mind around the fact that it took one man to mess it all up, but it took one man to fix it all. And we have to understand that he is the only way. We see here in 18, in verse 18, it says, look at this one, it says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, there it is again, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The offense of one, there it is, Adam again. Judgment came upon all men. Judgment is coming upon everybody in the world. Everybody in this church. Judgment is coming. And have you accepted the free gift? You see Paul talks about the gift. He's the gift. The free gift. There's a gift that fixes all this. Have you accepted that free gift? It's a free gift for anyone who will accept it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam being Jesus Christ. We see the importance of the fact that it took Adam and his one sin to doom the human race, and it took Jesus Christ to fix all the human race and all their sins. That's how precious his blood is. That's how precious his blood is. And I want to point out the fact that it tells us in the last part of 17, it says, By one, much more, they receive the abundance of grace. When we receive this free gift and this abundance of grace, grace being undeserved, unmerited, favor and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ reign in life if you accept this free gift you're going to get to have eternal life with Jesus everybody in here is going to have eternal life but there's two destinations one being hell one being heaven I don't want anybody to go to hell, but the Bible tells me that it's enlarging itself every day. And that's a sad thing to think about. There's going to be more people in hell than there is in heaven. 
because people don't believe anymore. People have fallen away from the Bible. People are being just like these people here where Paul's pointing out that the people before Moses, just because they didn't have a law, was no excuse. Just because you throw the Bible away and don't read it, that's not an excuse. It isn't going to work with God. And we see that we have this life. Now, the one free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Wow. Look what Philippians 2, 2 8 says. It says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ himself was obedient. You know, people don't understand sometimes that God didn't force Jesus to do what he did. He didn't make him do it. He volunteered. He volunteered to do it. If it wasn't for him, we would all be doomed from the start, just like Adam just like everybody else, we'd all be doomed if it wasn't for Jesus Christ in the resurrection. You know, Easter's coming up in about, I think, three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. It should be the most important holiday of a Christian's life Amen. is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because without the resurrection, there would be no heaven for us to go to. Right. Amen. People don't understand is that Jesus Christ being born and dying on a cross, that was very, very vital and very important. Mm -hmm. But without the resurrection, without him resurrecting, there would be nowhere for us to go. Right. Be thankful for the resurrection. We see here in verse 19, and then we go into verse 20. It says, moreover, the law, here we get the law again, entered that the offense, in other words, the sin, might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You know, the law was written back in Deuteronomy and Moses. It's a long, long, long list of rules. And if you want to read them, you'll find out real quickly that there's one of them that you've messed up on. And the whole reason for the law, I believe, is to show the people that there was no way to live perfect. They were all sinners. They were all doomed. And there's nobody on this earth except for Jesus Christ himself that has ever followed the law to the complete contents that is written. Because the Bible tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we see here it says, verse 20, Moreover the law entered that the sin might abound. It was to point out the fact that they were sinners, they weren't perfect, and they needed something to fix their problems. It says, but the last part says, Grace... But where sin abounded, grace much did much more abound. In John 15, 22, it says, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not... This is Jesus Christ speaking in John 15, 22. It says, If I had not come and spoken unto them, and they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. If Jesus was writing, it was Jesus was speaking here, in other words, now that he had spoken to them, they had no excuse for their sins. And that's 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 where we're at today in this society. There's a lot of people today 
that have got plenty excuses about why they don't go to church, why they ain't a Christian, and why they think that heaven and hell ain't real. There's a lot of excuses the devil has been piling on people out there. And we see here that in verse 20, that grace, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. There's going to be no excuses for the sin. In verse Timothy 1, 14 through 15, it says this, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding, abundant, with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all except exception. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am a chief. That's Paul writing to Timothy, telling him, Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners, who I am a chief of. Here's Paul, a man who, writ, who wrote just about all the New Testament, but, but of a few books, saying he is the chief of sinners. I can stand here today and tell you I'm a chief of sinners. I mess up all the time. But we see that even though when we mess up, God will forgive you. God will love you. And God sent his son to die for you. Adam messed it up. God had a plan. And his plan was to send his son as a sacrifice. We go back, you can go back to the Old Testament when they sacrificed all the animals to cover their sins. And it, that was just a temporary thing. It only took them so far. It had to take something more permanent. It had to take only, there was only one thing that could do it. If you read and study, you'll find out that God knew that there was only one thing that could fix the sin of this world, and that was Jesus Christ. There was nothing else that could do it. And he was willing to do it. One man entered into the world. Death would come upon all of us. It doomed all the human race. And there was only one thing to fix it, and that was Jesus. Yes. And we need to accept the free gift that Paul writes about here in Romans. He mentions it several times. The free gift. The gift. The free gift. We need to accept this free gift. Without the free gift, heaven will not be your home. You have to accept the free gift. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one way to get there. And we need to understand that this world is already doomed. We need to accept the free gift that God has for us. As Paul was writing here to the Romans, I think about all Paul did. And I think about what he told Timothy, a young preacher who was, he was teaching and bringing up he tells Timothy, I'm the chiefest of sinners, and Jesus Christ came to die for me. And he came to die for you too. Not just Paul, and not just anybody else. He came to die for everybody. That's how great his blood is. That's how precious his blood is. It was enough to cover the sins of the entire world. Just one sin messed the whole world up. It took the blood of Jesus to fix it all. Have you accepted that free gift? As Chloe comes and gets a song in a second, I want to ask you, have you accepted this free gift? If you've not accepted it, you've already been condemned. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. But I'm afraid people are continuing to turn away from God. They don't want to hear what God has to say. And when judgment comes, as we've read here in the scriptures, judgment is coming. There will be no excuses with God. When we stand before God, there will be no excuses. You cannot say, well, I didn't know, or I didn't think it was real, or I thought all that was just a fairy tale. That doesn't work with God. There will be no excuses. Do not let the devil tell you that it's not real. The devil is doing a wonderful job of deceiving people today. It's obvious. Look at the shape our country is in. 
some of the things that are going on just it makes you so disheartening so disappointed that we got people with no morals whatsoever with the things that are happening with abortion and all the other things that are happening in this country sin is just everywhere people don't care anymore it's a sad state but there will be no excuses when we meet with God we will all stand and be accountable for what we have done with the free gift that God has a gift to everyone that's have you accepted this gift as Chloe comes and sings I want to tell you don't turn God away he offers a free gift to everybody he's not picky about who you are he don't care he loves everyone he wants you to accept the free gift amen Could everyone please stand and turn to page 
It's amazing, you know, back here beside us. You see Chill High Mountain up here, Smoky Mountain down there, Big Sink and Big. We got four up here, but that was beautiful program. Hey, Let me tell you something. for our youth, our workers, our children. Children do a wonderful thing. We got wonderful children here. They, they, they do well and the youth do well and we're just so grateful and proud of them. Give glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Now, um, don't forget tonight, Heaven's Highway Trio will be here singing for us and uh, you come and you'll be blessed. They're, they're very good. It'll be a worship service. We don't, we, when we have singings here, it's to glorify God. Uh, that's what we do here. We want the people that come in here to sing that glorifies God. And I want them to sing to Jesus. And that's, that's what we've got to do better, sing to Jesus. We don't come here to put on no show. I don't like, I've been to a lot of those that puts on shows. I, I'm not a fan of that. I want to hear people come sing for Jesus. So we're grateful for that. Glad to have you visit. Boy, the house is full this morning. Uh, so that's wonderful. Wonderful. We're glad you're here visiting with us. We're delighted you're here. Uh, if you don't have a church to go to, you come back and worship with us because uh, we, believe in, we believe in the Bible here. Amen. We believe in the songs of Zion that sing the gospel. We believe in it. And, and let me say, some people say, well, uh, uh, has God give up on America? Oh, no, that's the wrong question. We've give up on God. Amen. Don't say that God's give up on America. We've give up on God. America's give up on God. That's the problem. But, uh, you know, and, and a lot of churches, I was listening to uh, David Jeremiah, one of my favorite preachers, and he was talking about how the churches, and we talk about there were going to be a great, great uh, spiritual awakening. There's not going to be a great spiritual awakening biblically. There's no one in the Bible that said there's going to be a great spiritual awakening. He says there's going to be a great falling away. Amen. Right? There ain't going to be no... They might be locally in some churches good spiritual awakenings, but not as a nation because, you see, there's this church. The churches are declining. They're declining, and they're closing the doors. And even here, we're supporting uh, uh, down at, uh, it was a Baptist church. Uh, I can't think of the name of it down here before you go over to cross over into Knox County on the left there. Can anybody remember the name of that church? It used to be a Baptist church. Al Colway, that's it, Al Colway Baptist Church. Well, they closed the door, and now we've got Hispanic ministry there. We send money there every month. Is it, or is it every week? Every month. We send money every week. So we are helping that church stay alive. And there, we've met the pastor. They preach the gospel, and uh, they, they worship God. And so a lot of the churches that are able now are buying into churches and taking churches over, and, but keep them from dying. And big, big churches that can do that, this is the way they're doing it. And it's a sad time. But we're in the falling away period. You said something. Hell hath in what? Large. That means it's getting larger and larger. And that's the truth. That's biblical. And this is what's happening. And so we need to just keep, hang on. Don't give up. Don't give up. The next event, the next prophetic event is the rapture of the church. And that's going to call us out of this mess. It's going to be over with. And then we're going, the, the, you don't want to be here when that tribulation breaks loose. You don't want to be here for that. So thank God that we're still pressing on and we're still looking for Jesus to come. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you're here? Amen. Good service. Wonderful service. We do, we let these youth do this and they do a wonderful job. Every youth Sunday they do a wonderful job. So I don't know, I'm kind of excited. What are you all going to come back with next time? I mean. It's just something different, and it's just wonderful. But it's wonderful. All right. See you tonight at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. We'll have a wonderful service here. 
I've been in so many services this week, I don't know, but, but preaching and teaching and eating. That's all I've done. Yeah, it's just unbelievable how, how that God has, uh, it's, it's, you know, death, but we, I present the plan of salvation in sermons most of the time. That's just the way I believe it. I believe you present things there, and that's the way you minister to people. Because people won't come to church, but they'll come to a funeral, and you, that's an opportunity to share the gospel with them. And, and I've done that. So God bless. All right. All hearts and minds clear. All right. You uh, come back and be with us anytime you can. All right. Brother